Wow, man, that one surprised me big time. I'm not going to lie. There's already been a few cuts updated this morning so far, but two of them were big surprises, specifically the Jimmy Moreland one, man. So, of course, we got to dive into all of the recent cuts that have happened just so far this morning as of Tuesday, August 31st. And then, of course, I have to analyze these moves and figure out, like, does this mean this person's safe? Does that mean that this person is more likely to make the roster? All of that type of stuff. So before we dive into that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Also, make sure you check out the rest of the channel. All of my videos are organized in playlists. I even have a comedy playlist for all my funny videos. And with Washington football team basically going into the dark as far as media access goes these next two weeks. That's just more time for me to get more content out for y'all. So be prepared for a lot of great content these next two weeks leading up to the Chargers game. And without further ado, man, let's get it. All right, so the first thing I saw was that the Washington football team released offensive tackle David Steinmetz, and I was like, okay, that makes sense. That was expected. We actually have quite a bit of offensive line depth. Ron Rivera a couple of days ago said that he wants to keep probably like 10 offensive linemen on the 53-man roster and maybe another six on the practice squad. And even so, I still felt like David Steinmetz was on the outside looking in, may make it to the practice squad, may not. But then I look up a couple of minutes later, William Bradley King, our seventh round draft pick of this 2021 draft that just happened a couple of months ago, was released as well. And that caught me off guard for a couple of reasons. First of all, Ron Rivera just said that he wants to give his draft picks at least a year for the most part. And granted, William Bradley King was a seventh round pick, but I thought he would at least make this roster for the first season and then we'll evaluate him again. And then secondly, he actually looked pretty good. He was making plays in training camp. He was batting down passes at the line of scrimmage. And then in preseason, he was getting strip sacks. So with the way he performed in the preseason, I'm not entirely too sure if he clears waivers. I would like for him at the very least to end up on our practice squad, but I'm not sure if he makes it. I hope he does, but don't be surprised in the least bit if he doesn't again he put together a pretty decent resume early on just this offseason and there's got to be some edge rusher needy team looking for a guy with some potential like a william bradley king that's gonna scoop him up i mean most teams in the nfl don't have a montez sweat and a chase young granted our depth is still a little questionable but some teams have questions for their starters. And so why not bring in a William Bradley King to see what he can do now, or at the very worst, groom him for later. Again, I hope we end up still having a chance to groom him for later by him making the practice squad, but again, I doubt it. But then there's roster implications for this. Because if William Bradley King is gone, that pretty much sounds like James Smith Williams is like now a lock to make this roster. After this William Bradley King release, James Smith Williams has to be a lock to make the roster. They already love his positional versatility, his positional flex. You know, Ron Rivera has been preaching that all along. James Smith Williams can play both defensive end and interior defensive line. So already assumed he was making the roster, but now with William Bradley King out of the way, again, that's a lock. James Smith Williams is already probably higher on the depth chart than William Bradley King to begin with. So this shouldn't be a surprise, but again, I think he's one of the locks as of 8 a.m. this morning. And also maybe this clears the way for Shaka Tony to make the team. And then Casey Tuhill, who this organization likes a lot, he's been hurt quite a bit this offseason barely even played in the preseason if he did at all i'm not even sure if he played a single snap in the preseason due to his injuries maybe he did maybe i forgot but either way he's been hurt a lot this offseason especially since preseason has started up so maybe he did enough earlier in the offseason for him to still have a roster spot your best ability is availability so it may be a kind of questionable move but casey Tuhill is probably the better player today than the William Bradley King. But William Bradley King has a lot of potential. Again, he was making plays this offseason. And this may even make room for one or two interior defensive linemen like a David Bada or Daniel Wise to make the roster as well. Because Devara Lawrence already got released yesterday. But again, I think they may just honestly prefer Shaka Tony over James Smith Williams. I don't know yet. We'll see. Because I think you should at least keep four defensive ends, right? Montez Sweat, 
Chase Young, that's two. Jay Smith Williams, that's three. And then you have Casey Tuhill or Shaka Tony fighting for that last spot, in my opinion. But again, Jay Smith Williams is both defensive end and interior defensive lineman or defensive tackle. So technically, that's three and a half defensive ends with this positional flex. We'll see. And then the big surprise. They cut Jimmy Moreland soon afterwards. That one, I, that I was completely blindsided by that. The only reason I was kind of already feeling like he may get cut was because of how much he was playing in that third preseason game. He played for a very long time in that third preseason game. Whereas like a lot of starters and even some second stringers weren't even active in that preseason game against the Ravens. Jimmy Moreland was out there for a while, like with the third stringers and all. So I was like, why are we playing Jimmy Moreland so much? Is he playing for a roster spot right now? And then he got beat on a couple of routes. So I'm not entirely too surprised. But it is still shocking because I like Jimmy Moreland a lot. And I felt like he was at the very least our backup slot corner. I didn't even think about the fact that he was on the verge of not making the roster. I thought he was directly the backup slot corner. I thought Benjamin St. Jude is like our projected starting outside corner eventually. But as of right now, he's William Jackson's backup. You have Kendall Fuller as the other outside corner slash your starting slot corner. I thought Jimmy Moreland was right behind him for the slot corner position. I feel like Tory McTire was more outside corner depth. Maybe they like Daryl Roberts that much? I don't know. Because they even cut Danny Johnson shortly afterwards as well. And this roster turnaround is crazy. No Jimmy Moreland, no Danny Johnson. I mean, if you were not drafted by this new regime, or at least signed here as a free agent, you are not safe at all. I really thought Jimmy Moreland was truly going to make this roster. Danny Johnson, I'm not surprised about. But again, the fact that both of those guys are gone shows how much they believe in Benjamin St. Juice, William Jackson, Kendall Fuller and Tory McTire and probably Daryl Roberts as well with his versatility. I keep telling y'all, Daryl Roberts is a jack of all trades, even though he may not be a master of any. He's literally had NFL seasons where he started most of the season at slot corner, another season where he started most of the season at outside corner, another season at strong safety, another season at free safety, and Ron Rivera has been preaching positional flex, and then Daryl Roberts went out there and made a couple of plays in that last preseason game against the Ravens, again, while Jimmy Moreland was getting beat on routes so that may have made their decision even easier and ron rivera just said quote um, just said a few days ago that there's a lot of veteran guys with positional flex on the back end of the roster that are making these cuts hard he said that before the preseason game against the ravens and i guess daryl roberts outplaying jimmy moreland was enough for him to make the roster and jimmy moreland not to and then this also means that trey apke is quite likely to make the roster Again, they love him in special teams, arguably our best gunner, and that has priceless value to it. It's like I've been saying, Nate Caxer and every special teams coordinator in the NFL get to personally pick like a handful of guys that stay on this roster strictly for special teams. Jared Norris, David Mayo, Cam Sims, Trey Apke, maybe even Derek Forrest, maybe DeShazer Everett. All of these guys are strong candidates for that, and that's just special teams coverage. That's not even the returning side with DeAndre Carter, Dax Milne, Jared Patterson, Isaiah Wright, who was cut already yesterday. So we'll see. Again, special teams has a much larger impact on who makes this team or not than people give credit to. And Trey Apke is just one of those guys. Plus, he made the transition from safety to corner, and he went from being one of the worst safeties I've ever seen to an actually pretty decent backup corner. He's no Tory McTire, but we had a top three defense last year with Trey Apke being our starting free safety for like half the season. So him being a backup corner, I'm not worried about at all. Again, I'm surprised by the Jimmy Moreland move, but when you really look at the roster, you have some positional flex towards slot corner if you need it. For the nickel position, you can have Kendall Fuller, like I already said, like I hope he starts in the nickel because I hope Benjamin St. Juice is good enough to push him down to the nickel to where St. Juice can start an outside corner. Then you also have Bobby McCain, who a lot of people, including Pro Football Focus, feel like he's a better slot corner than he is a free safety. Then you also have Cameron Curl. You kind of have Landon Collins as well. Again, you have Daryl Roberts and technically Benjamin St. Juice. Also just coming in, Washington has cut Jordan Kunizic, and they released Jeremy Reeves too, another one? Oh no, that's a huge surprise as well. I'm very surprised Jeremy Reeves didn't make it. Only reason I'm not is because he had a great offseason last year, 
and still didn't make the 53 man roster. We ended up bringing him back mid season, but then I thought he did well enough coming in late last season and what he put together this off season between preseason training camp practices i thought he definitely played well enough to make this roster i mean maybe he makes it to our practice squad but i feel like he did enough i mean even pro football focus graded him the best safety we ever threw out there in preseason with a minimum amount of snaps he has the highest overall grade out of every washington safety in the entire preseason he has the highest tackle grade and the highest coverage grade so again that's very surprising that we cut him like i keep saying pro football focus isn't the end all be all but there's something to it and with how he looked in the preseason and with the tape he put out there this offseason i'd be pretty surprised if he doesn't get picked up immediately i think william bradley king is very likely to get picked up and won't make our practice squad i think jimmy Moreland's even more likely to get picked up and not make our practice squad and i feel like jeremy reeves may be somewhere in the middle maybe just as likely as jimmy Moreland to get picked up by somebody else and not make it to our practice squad so we just need to go ahead and accept that those three guys more than likely will no longer be on this team at all i hope they clear waivers and make it to our practice squad but jeremy reeves jimmy Moreland, and william bradley king i think they're as good as gone so wow that's really interesting because then now that opens up a spot for deshaza every making the team we already know bobby mccain cameron curl landon collins are locks at safety again trey apke isn't a safety he's a corner now so then that means deshaza everett and Derek forrest are both far more likely to make this roster than i originally believed i thought Derek forrest and jeremy reeves would make it in my 53 man roster prediction deshaza everett would be the odd man out on the outside looking in now with jeremy reeves out the way i think deshaza everett and Derek forrest both make this team Derek Forrest is your project developmental guy that you hope pays dividends later on down the line in his career. And DeShazer Everett is the dependable backup that you know for a fact you can play in games right now if there's any type of injury. Now, if it becomes a battle between DeShazer Everett or Derek Forrest for that fourth safety spot, as we're seeing right now, they're starting to lean towards the more veteran type of guys that they can depend on right now rather than these younger guys that they hope to develop. Maybe they're just confident in their ability to find more guys like that in next year's draft or the waiver wire later on this week maybe to add to their practice squad. I don't know, I guess they don't wanna give up dependability to bank on potential. Again, I feel like they may just be confident enough. We did it in this past draft. We did it in the draft before that we know how to draft well so we can afford to give up some of these high potential guys that we're not sure about contributing day one because we feel like we can repeat the success we've had scouting these guys and we can just find more later on if we need to plus like i said a couple of videos ago this team went from rebuild mode to pretty much like a win now mode in less than two years so I can see why they're leaning towards the veteran guys like a Daryl Roberts over a Jimmy Moreland, a DeShazer Everett potentially over a Jeremy Reeves and possibly bringing in an outside defensive end to replace William Bradley King, like a veteran type of guy. They wanna make sure they have guys that they know for a fact they can count on to step in to a game, whether it be part of rotation or due to injury, and can contribute immediately rather than being out there looking lost. Again, I wasn't one of the people that was highest on Jeremy Reeves, but I didn't think he was one of those guys that was lost out there. Same thing with Jimmy Moreland. I didn't think William Bradley King looked bad either, but supposedly they want guys with higher floors. They'll look for higher ceilings later. And man, I'm sitting here editing the video and there's more chaos going on. First of all, Jimmy Moreland was released with an injury designation. They also went ahead and released Wes Martin and a few other not very notable names, but the big ones that just happened while I was editing my video was Antonio Gandy Golden, the wide receiver fourth round pick from 2020 pretty surprised about that if this were a few months ago i wouldn't have been surprised at all because i actually expected it but based on what he did this offseason especially in the preseason games with them releasing kelvin Harmon, i'm pretty surprised that he's not making it does that mean both dax milne and deandre carter make it deandre carter for the returnability now dax milne with the returnability potential and with him having the potential to be our slot of the future our franchise slot guy after adam humphreys is gone and antonio gandy golden with his size and again the tape that he put out there this preseason he's probably the guy that's least likely to make it to our practice squad in the clear waivers out of everybody released today between Jimmy Moreland, William Bradley King, Jeremy Reeves, Antonio Gandy Golden, I'm pretty sure Gandy Golden is the least likely to clear waivers and to end up coming back to our team as one of those 16 practice squad guys. I highly doubt it. Once they released them, they pretty much already knew Antonio Gandy Golden's gone. 
So that bodes very well again for Dax Milne, DeAndre Carter, or maybe a receiver that has already been released by another team or may potentially get released or a free agent. Don't be surprised if they start bringing in guys from the outside. Because after they released Jeremy Reeves, Jimmy Moreland, and then Peyton Barber, which I'm going to talk about after this, I was like, okay, so they're cutting down on secondary, they're cutting down the defensive end with William Bradley King's release, and then they cut down with running back. I assumed that meant like, okay, Antonio Gandy Golden should be safe because we're probably going to walk in with seven, maybe even more than that receivers, but apparently he wasn't. So this is going to be really interesting. I think they're trying to cut this down below 53 and may bring in some guys from the outside. But then, like I just said, running back, huge. Peyton Barber was released and I really thought they were just going to keep four running backs. I mean, I love Jared Patterson. I like him way more than Peyton Barber, but it's been reported several times that this organization loves Barber and they feel like he has a niche on this team to get that one yard, even though I kept saying, I feel like Antonio Gibson and Jared Patterson can get you that one yard that you need as well, but also just have a way higher ceiling in the passing game and anywhere but third and one, fourth and one in goal line situations. And I felt like with us preaching positional flex so much, why would you even just keep a guy that's specifically good at one thing while other guys are good at that thing as well? Maybe there was potential to keep Peyton Barber for that role so that there's less mileage on Antonio Gibson and Jared Patterson because you see them as your future running backs. Apparently, they didn't feel that way. Again, Jared Patterson was Mr. Get One Yard, even if it was first and 10 he would make it second and nine. Second and nine, he would make it third and eight. I didn't feel like that was a much needed role on this team. Again, Antonio Gibson, Jared Patterson, I feel like can do the same thing as him, but better. So I'm not surprised by the cut as far as talent and production. But again, there have been reports all throughout this offseason, even kind of last year, that this organization for some reason loves Peyton Barber and he cut down on weight so that he could be a little bit more explosive. Didn't really see that in the preseason at all. But here we are. No more Peyton Barber, probably only keeping three running backs. So again, they're potentially going with less secondary than I expected. Definitely less running backs. Maybe the same amount of receivers, but just different receivers instead of Antonio Gandy Golden. Maybe it's DeAndre Carter and Dax Milne. And then less secondary or different secondary. They may really be looking elsewhere on other teams to bring in some guys. I truly believe we're probably going to sign some guys from the outside where there'd be even possibly quarterback. Will Greer got released. You know his strong connections to the organization. Kyle Laletta, I talked about him in my last video. He has some relatively solid connections to this organization if they choose to go that route as a backup quarterback over at Kyle Allen as well. And then linebacker. I'm one of those guys that wants KJ Wright. Granted, he's an outside linebacker, but hey, throw Jamin Davis into the Wolves, start him and Mike linebacker immediately. Cole Holcomb, Jamin Davis, KJ Wright. I love that linebacker trio. Jamin Davis may not be ready for that type of responsibility week one, but the quicker we get him out there to do it, the faster he'll learn and the better he'll be. And you can't convince me no matter what's going on that Cole Holcomb, John Bostic, and Jamin Davis are better than Cole Holcomb, Jamin Davis, and KJ Wright. You just can't convince me. I don't care what's going on schematically. At that point, just give me those three athletic linebackers. Mike, somebody else will have to just be the quarterback of the defense. Maybe Landon Collins. I don't know. Jack Del Rio from the sideline. Give me those three any day. I'm sorry. They could potentially be looking for some secondary help from elsewhere. Maybe even receiver help. We'll see. Maybe a running back. Devontae just got released. So yeah, man, definitely get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about all of these decisions and roster moves that they've made today, man. A lot of these are surprises. This is crazy. This is chaos. I will be breaking down everything that happens today. So stay tuned for all of that, man. But yeah, man, I'm going to keep you updated on all of this. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Definitely get in the comment section. Let me know how y'all feel about everything I discussed in this video because this is wild. Also, please like this video if you liked it, if you learned anything. And as always, man, I appreciate all of the support, man. Big shouts out to everybody that donates to the channel. A special shout out to all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors. Who name you see scrolling on the screen right now. Man, I really appreciate all y'all. Catch y'all later. I'm out.